I don't seem to have like a standard greeting every time I make a video. Um, all these YouTubers always have some sort of greeting, so I'm not a YouTuber. I am a programmer, hacker, so we'll just go with that. I have some exciting news again, as always. Um, we have a change of scenery today anyway, because I'm usually in my basement, which is my, my lab where I can get messy and build things, but this is cleaner, so I don't really need to like cut or solder or build anything. So we're upstairs where I keep all of my collectibles and stuff I get to play with. Um, but that's for another day. Okay, let's get back to Naboo. So here we're at. Um, a couple things. So first off, what I've done with my program is um, I figured out how the segments and the packs are sent if they're too large because my programs I've been working with are under one kilobyte. And I tried sending something that was larger than one kilobyte and that wouldn't work. So it turns out as I create a packet, there is a pack type. Okay, so the header format has also changed from what I was using before that York had given me. So there's been a little bit of um, additional detail added. And one of those things too is the pack type. So when the pack is greater than, let's see, a specific uh, size, there we go, last packet, we set the fourth bit of the, of the byte, and that will say it's a last packet. If it's not set, then we can continue sending more packets. So I could demonstrate that. What I've done is I've taken my Hello World program, and I've added, <laughs> because you guys love this, a lot of knob. Nop, 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 nop. So I made the file large. And now our file, when I assemble it, um, there we go, we assembled it. Let's take a look here. C drive, Naboo segments. So now it's two kilobits, okay? So, I mean, it's not crazy, 1.74, but it needs to be at least in two segments. So we'll run our server. And how the server works at this point is, um, Segments are, are numbered, okay? And inside of a, a segment is multiple packs. Now, I have to review the documentation because the terminology that I've been given from York I think is backwards. I feel like a segment is a portion of a pack, okay? So um, the terminology that I've been using with me prior to an email is, is the opposite. So it's, it doesn't sound right when I think of a segment as being a larger chunk and a pack being a smaller chunk, but We'll, um, we'll clarify that pretty soon because I'm talking to an ex Nabu engineer who's, I don't want to ruin the surprise, but we might have some software for you. And the server is almost ready to put online, which means that in the next couple of days, everyone with their Nabu will be able to start connecting to the Nabu network. This is not an exaggeration. This is exciting. So um, what will happen is if there's no file found, <laughs> I made a little program that will actually tell you on the nab it'll just say files not found and it pauses for a couple seconds and, and goes back to the main menu so that's uh that's just a little thing that i threw into the server here okay so server will start it and now we'll refresh the there we go okay so what what we're going to see here is two packets being sent. So what it's done is taken the large segment. Okay, again, hopefully the next video will will clarify and change the terminology and it might be changed anyway, but maybe not, maybe it is, we'll see. Um, so here's the first pack being sent. And then the NABU actually requests for a pack number, well, number two, which is number one, because the first packet request is, is, um, is zero, okay? So then my, what my program does is grab it, splits it all up, puts the header on it and the, uh, the CRC as well, and then fires it off to the NAB where the NAB gets it. So as you can see here, the program ran. Now somebody else had asked, they said, well, the next thing you should do is see if you can get the keyboard to work. I was like, you know what? That's a good idea. Why don't we, I know I can get the HCCA to work. I could talk about that port. So why don't we see if we can get the keyboard to work? So type, 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 type. Hello, I'm a Nebu. So this is actually 
pretty funny because this I, I, I could hook the keyboard right up to the computer and we do it in Arduino. And we'll do that in a later project, um, maybe a relaxing project because it's gonna be super easy. Every character they send out of here, out of that RS-422 is literally the ASCII code for ASCII. So you don't have to do any sort of, I mean, the arrow keys might you might have to because who knows what values those are yet, but you don't have to do any translation for any for any, most of the keys. Like even my asterisk, parenthesis, like when I, when I have taken my NABU computers and my Atari and, or sorry, my uh, Commodore 64 computers and my Atari and other computers that I've uh, ported over with Raspberry Pis, because like these guys all have Raspberry Pis inside of them. So yeah, don't hate me. <laughs> don't hate me. But anyway, I keep the motherboards and I don't cut the cases up. So they're still, uh, go retrofit back if we need to. But anyway, so I have to, I, I hook up the hardware to an Arduino and I always have to uh, figure out what the translation is between what they thought ASCII was and what ASCII standard became. So that's pretty exciting. Um, those are the two good news is, oh, and the third good news too is, I mean, I haven't really got a, it sounds like I got a lot done, but I didn't get a lot done because I got sucked into that TV show, The Expanse last night and boy if you blink you lose like hours of, of of detail because there's so much going on this is a folder called z88 dk and z88 is a uh, z80 compiler that is great for embedded systems and also for uh, game consoles like the coleco vision the msx etc and they have libraries for the vdp for the sound everything now, the NABU doesn't have, obviously, a definition or any libraries um, for this project, for this, uh, this development environment. So what I'm doing is I'm actually creating one, and that means that we'll be able to have uh, C programming with the headers and the libraries and everything to access all the code. Now, this might actually change a little bit, because what I started to do yesterday was talking directly to the hardware. Um, I can't... I don't want to jump the gun, but it sounds like we might actually have an ex NABU engineer who has all the software, including the iOS, and he might be able to send it to us. So it's pretty exciting. And I should add a little bit more information here to clarify how the NABU works, because what we've been doing is we've been loading a segment. Here, I'm going to use a NABU computer keyboard for this. How does that sound? Okay. So the, um, the, this, what happens is we get asked right away is for the iOS. So the, it asks for a, a uh, segment called 000, so 1, 2, 3, 4, there we go, 6, okay? It asks for that segment, and then it asks for each individual pack. So if there's multiple packs, it increases until I send all the packs, okay? Now, if, um, if when the main menu loads, after doing that, then all of your programs also have a number, let's say 00006 or something, right? And then all of the packs for that will load slowly. And the reason why they split it up too is because on the carousel, like I had mentioned, there might be segment uh, pack number one for segment number one. So we'll just go like 1.1 and then there'll be one, or sorry, um, one dot, there won't be one dot. I can't backspace yet, so <laughs> one dot one, then it might be like two dot one, or two dot minus my bad typing. It's a new keyboard for me to use. Come on, it's forty years old, All right? So each each segment will have a different piece, and then it might loop around. And now you get like one dot two, and then you'll get two dot two. And the reason why they do this, they had to split it all up too, is because you write, and I mentioned this before, that it's a six megabit um, transfer on this carousel, okay, over the cable modem. But the speed between the network adapter and the NABU is 111 kilobits. So you can't take all of the data and fire it into over the, uh, the into the NABU that quickly because you would need to have enough cache. Which let's say you're loading like a you know a 40 kilobit program, you need to have 40k of RAM inside the network adapter, but not just that, you also have to be able to calculate the CRC, the header, you have to store it, you got to split it up, 
right? You have all these different things you have to do. So you end up, this 40K ends up become, really quickly becoming like say 100K or some, who knows, right? Depends on, uh, on how efficient the programmer is. But either way, their solution was just to split up the program into smaller pieces so that um, they come after, right? Because their, their sunny net is always being sent. The NABU may stand for um, net, net, network, whatever, bi-directional stuff, stuff, but there was really no bi-directional. Um, there was a uh, like an actual physical landline analog modem that you could connect to it that I know we had at our, at our house, but my uncle's house. But um, I don't I don't recall, and I don't remember, he, like I said before in another video, he did have a version of the cable modem that allowed you to transfer data upwards, but the uplink didn't exist for majority of uh, people who used it because um, there was no way to send data back. The carousel just accepted data. That was it. And you couldn't download the data anyway, right? Because the carousel wasn't dynamic. It wasn't um, something that you could request something for. It was just this constant thing. And then what was neat about this though is that, and the reason I'm explaining this is that when one, when this segment, one, two, one, two, when that segment, the very first segment gets asked, gets requested, it's loaded, okay? Oh, oh, there was a symbol button here. I went to hit shift and I'm hitting the symbol. So when request 000001 gets loaded, it gets requested, um, that is actually the iOS, like I'd mentioned, and it also contains the main menu. Now, when the iOS gets loaded, it contains a ton well, that's just, that symbol button's gonna be a pain in the butt. Um, it contains a bunch of subroutines. And these subroutines are essentially the BIOS that you would find inside of a ColecoVision or an MSX or some sort of uh, computer that's already got a bunch of help, helper subroutines for, for programmers. Now, if we say take a look here at, um, let's see. Where are we here? There we go, let's get into our folder, this file here. This is gonna be important. So if anyone has seen this file yet, the Nabu PC technical specs, if you haven't seen it, I recommend grabbing it, just to have it and archive it, and it's fun to, to preview, but there's information in here about, not, it's, about, it's not about the communication between the Nabu and the network adapter, or anything else, it's really just how the NABU itself is working and requesting files, etc. So um, there's some information here about about the video. There's a huge section on video because obviously that part was super important, right? But let's there's a little bit on sound. But here's the internal operating software, and it talks a little bit about um, the iOS layout. So when it downloads it. Where you're going to find your applications, program stack, and uh, BIOS calls you can use. Okay, and then there's different. <clears throat> look, they're telling you how you can get to different locations. You can jump to some locations. You can call some locations. Yeah, yeah, we know that. But let's and it talks about CPM and they crossed out all the things on CPM that do not work, like console output, system reset, punch output, things like that. So. These are the these are parts of the CPM manual that are not supported. So when people talk about that there's a, a limited IO, um, CPM in the NABU, they're correct. <clears throat> okay, so let's go down here. Another little bit of information here about uh, segment handling. So se uh, segment handling is essentially like we're, what we're doing, right? We're sending over files. This is how the iOS treats it. So when I first saw this, I got excited. I was thinking, oh my God, this is gonna be the header that's expected. And, you know, segment addresses and stuff, and it's like, no, 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 this is just the, the template in RAM that the, the subroutine will use to be able to request the data. And you can see here, uh, segment headers, start addresses and end addresses. So this is how the programmer would be able to request things. And there's some examples on how to do segment handling. And if we keep going, the reason why I'm showing you this is because they created a ton of subroutines to aid the programmer. And a lot of them are documented in here. And let's see here. Uh, 
Okay, so here's a bunch, and this is this is before the documentation starts. Um, but yeah, so you have a bunch of different, you can fill patterns and move sprites, all sorts of things, play audio, all that kind of stuff. So these are pre-built subroutines. So what I'm gonna be doing inside of the Z88 compiler is um, creating pointers, a header file to these subroutines so that we'll be able to write program without having to do everything in assembly. I know those who like assembly, go for it, but I think since we're going to allow people to upload programs to our Naboo server and throw it onto the menu, um, we want to uh, allow it to be super easy for people. So we'll be able to do it in C. And of course, there's also this Python to assembler compiler that I, I saw, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, I don't know if it works, but yeah, we can see. I mean, it's, we're just going to be generating binaries that are going to be way too big. But hey, we got 64 kilobytes of RAM. Well, after the iOS is loaded, we have a little less, but hey, that's awesome. So, updates today. Nabu server, large uh, segment or pack files. We'll figure out the terminology too later. Uh, compiler, uh, keyboard. Yeah, so, oh, and also, like I said, files are coming. So we're only a few days away. So maybe next week, who knows? You might be connecting all of your Nabus to the internet. Like, that's just amazing. This is a computer that was designed and built to do exactly what we're going to do. Like, blowing my mind. <sighs> okay, to the next video. See you soon.